Hello everybody, this is Zerda with Zerda MTG, and I'm back at it again today with some budget mono blue flash for historic. Alright, so haven't changed anything up today. I don't think yesterday was enough uh, information to find out how exactly we want to build the sideboard, uh, let alone what we want to move out of the main. Um, so our main board includes four Spectral Sailor, four Curious Obsession, uh, four C Dasher Octopus as our card advantage. Um, three Unsummon, four Brazen Borrower as our get a creature off the board creature interaction, um, four Merfolk Trickster as the end of our creature interaction, um, at least for onboard creatures. Uh, stack interaction includes three Syncopate, three Mystical Dispute that can hit anything, um, three Negates that can hit uh, things that might affect us, and our threat package, um, as in the creatures that we actually want to stick onto the board because they're um, just the best way we can actually manage to close out a game, are four Brineborn Cutthroat and four Fairy Vandal. So Fairy Vandal does take either a Sea Dasher or a Curious Obsession on it to uh, really get it going. Um, honestly, Spectral Sailor doesn't do as much, but we need some one-drop threats to Curious Obsession. Uh, those hands do come up that we need. We do need those hands sometimes. Uh, we just go end of your turn, uh, play Spectral, untap, play a Curious, hold up Dispute for a Teferi that might be coming down. Um, I have thought about turning one Negate into a Spell Pierce. Not entirely positive I want to do that. Um, Negate's just pretty good in the late game. Um, I'd say if we could have one card in our hand in the late game as we've uh, if we've pulled ahead, then it would always be negate, just because it stops uh, any kind of shenanigans that could catch our opponent back out, back up outside of Ravenous Chubacabra, being able to take out a huge threat, chump, and then buy them some time. But that's besides the point. Um, Brazen Borrower kind of fits into that threat package, a 3-1 combined with basically any other threat um, is a lot of damage. And uh, combine it with a Spectral Sailor, that's 4 uh, that's a five turn clock. Hopefully we've done some damage before then. Um, so that's basically it for our threat package. Um, and that's the deck. 19 uh, islands, one castle Vantress, because we might as well run the one. Um, it has no real downside outside of one landers, and we don't really want to keep those anyway. So let's go ahead and see exactly how this works out for us. Traditional, or no, just regular old historic rate. All right. I am working on uh, also building a reanimator deck and um, a few different standard decks. I'm just really enjoying Historic and where it is. Outside of Winota, nothing is really absurd, and even Winota is beatable as long as you're building with it in mind. Wait to respond. Right, so not sure if that captured it for you, but on my end, uh, as soon as I start these games, uh, Arena likes to kind of freeze a little. On the play, I'll keep this, because holding up Fairy Vandal or Syncopate on turn 2 is pretty good, especially with the Curious Obsession. Um, we're going to really hope that this is a matchup, um, and against Luris, we're hoping it is, that we get to turn 2 the Vandal, and then turn 3, um, put the Obsession on it, and continue to hit with the Vandal, while holding up Syncopate. Growing by one power a turn might not seem like a lot, but it does get um, pretty out of hand pretty quickly. Opponent led on Castle Lockwin. Makes me think they're more than one color. <coughs> oh. Alright. Alright, that's fine. It does mean I have to deal with it later. But that could still be a decent ways off. I'm just going to discard an island. I know that means that my opponent uh, does get to um, ping me for three. But three damage isn't really anything to get worried about. Alright. And we are approaching a game state we will, or that we want to be in. 
We have a 3-4 flyer that continues to grow. We have a counter spell in hand if they try to answer our threat. And uh, card advantage. Cat is fine, we cannot stop it. If they play an oven, we might syncopate. I doubt it though. Okay, so if we counter... No, they can have that. We're gonna see dash onto the Fairy Vandal. Um, growing it by one, and allowing us to draw even more cards. Shame it won't grow the Vandal faster, but I still say it's worth it. Alright, what are you doing, opponent? Yeah, we need that Syncopate to uh, deal with bigger threats. But we'll place it over. So we're not going to deploy the Vandal now, even though it would grow. Um, instead, we're just going to hit them. Draw our two cards. <coughs> I guess we will take action. Not bad. Uh, could have been better. So likely we'll just flash in a Fairy Vandal and nothing else. Um, on our turn, we might put the Sea Dasher on it. I don't think we will, though. I think we'll just be happy to hold up the Syncopate um, until we can draw some more interaction. Yep, Firebrand is a charm. Makes me think of uh, Mayhem Devil. But they'd have played it before the Firebrand if it was in their hand, just thinking of potential future draw steps. Alright, claim the Firstborn is something that has to be countered. We're not going to lose our creature and let them draw that many cards. Yep, three is fine, because that's the most we can do. They cannot claim again. I think our opponent also forgot to ping us with the cat on their turn. Which is weird. Cat is fine. We'll take two. Swing it on back. sure there was nothing else in exile um, that I just wasn't thinking about when I get a feel for what all our opponent might have. And, and it goes. Lands, not terrible. Here they're going to sack something. We don't really mind. We just wish that uh, we had one more piece of protection from a claim, the firstborn. Alas, we do not. Opponent is on that budget mana base. Nothing wrong with that. Um, target creature and opponent controls. Okay. So we're going to have to tap down the Sea Dasher here. We're going to lose it either way. But we're not letting them hit us for six with our own creature. Um, and do the rest. It's just something we're not going to let happen.
And now we can wait for them to attack. Drop a fairy vandal. Hmm. Interesting. I think we deploy a trickster actually. Deploy a trickster, tap down the firebrand. So that they have to use it now if they want to uh, trade. Block. Mind you, this isn't exactly the best. They still get to sack our sea dash or bring back both cats. Yeah, I think it was actually wrong to block there, ironically. Regardless. This won't change that though. start drawing cards. Sorry, Brianborn, but uh, I also want to start growing this grind or this uh, band a little bit more if I want to start growing you. So just attack with the Sea Dasher. Suppose we could attack with both tricksters as well and not really suffer for it. Um, other than not being able to use them as blockers. No. I like just the Sea Dasher. Start drawing cards. There we go. And turn. So we're not in the uh, most demanding of spots here. Yeah, opponent's gonna bring everything back. Nothing we're really gonna do about it. Suppose we might allow them to trade a. Uh, Cat and a firebrand for one of our tricksters. Get that ping off the board for them. I don't think we're going to because it just means Luris, but. Hmm. I think it was worth considering. But as long as they have Luris, I don't think it's actually worth it. So they get to trade for our Sea Dasher. It's really bad for us, actually. We're gonna res- oh, they- okay. I mean, that's not bad. Um... Yeah, we'll just discard the Brineborn. I don't think we're actually gonna need it that much. And they have a uh, free kill it whenever they want. We'll just take the hit from the cats. If they swing, it's the same damage either way. Yep. Same damage, except um, if we uh, do block, then they just get to gain two. Yeah, we're in a really bad spot here. I don't think that helps. Let's see. Start by attacking. Draw a card. Oof. Hmm. No, I think... Alright, we'll end. 
We'll see how this plays out. Maybe if they croak to... Uh, I bounce their uh, oven in response. Castle Lockwain. I think I bounce their oven. Their Luris. I do nothing yet. So we discard an island down to four. Three, two. Hmm. Let's see, because I'm not going to be able to kill them. Um, how I have everything set up now. So maybe I try and deceive them into recasting theirs. I think I deceive them into recasting Luris is how I win this. And I don't block. No, dang. I did my math terribly. I thought that they'd only have two open, and I could have just attacked with the tricksters by bouncing the Luris at the end. Alright, I just punted that game away. Uh, yeah, so don't listen to me. That was a terrible, terrible line. Absolutely atrocious. In fact, this just gave them more creatures, I believe, because now they can cast again. That, that straight up killed us. No? I, I thought they'd be able to do it again. Um, okay. Three, four, five. There we go. Holy Borrower. I thought they'd have, once again, one less mana to use with their uh, Bloodfall Caves and wouldn't be able to sacrifice a food. And that's why I made the play I did. I was very wrong. And as such, I am paying the price. Can someone forget this? Alright. Never punished. Never didn't have it. <coughs> and here we have the lethal swarm. So, uh, that just goes to show this deck is quite forgiving. <coughs> well, not exactly quite forgiving. We had, like, a six outs there. Point being, the deck is still powerful enough to save you from your own punts sometimes. That was a really close game, actually. That was kind of cool. It was really enjoyable. Wish I'd uh, played it better. <laughs> Alright, let's go again. Back into the fray with some budget shenanigans. This is, after all, um, I believe, 5 rare for Mythic, which is the most uh, budget I've ever made a deck for this channel. And one of the rares could even be dropped. Um, I think I'd keep this. Even on the draw. Syncopate with uh, Cutthroat or Vandal and Curious. And a little bit of creature interaction with the Murfolk. All 
Agonizing remorse. Nothing we can do about that. Hmm. I'd imagine a black deck would that plays discard would want to take our curious obsession, but they might just be um, an obliterator deck, at which point they hope to just resolve that and take the syncopate, which seems to be what they're looking at. Maybe try and jam Friction Arena next turn. Took one of the two ground one. That makes it less likely they have a uh, obliterator in their deck. Because if you have Obliterator, then you care more about the flying threat than the not flying threat. And as such, we will just deploy a Brine Bolt here. Allow them to murderous rider it. If they have it. If they do, we're not going to stop it. Um, we'd rather save the, uh... We'd rather save the syncopate for a threat. Likely this turn will be fair vandal spectral sailor. Nope, go ahead. Take your murder shredder. We do not care. Alright, that's annoying. Uh, we cannot counter it. To me that means deploy the thing we want to save the most. Because they'll take the syncopate if they care about it. If we do that, I think they just... We'll let them choose. I think we're losing our Fairy Vandal, though. It's going to be that or our Curious Obsession. Get that syncopate. Oh. Okay. We'll deploy... Vandal and the Sailor. They'll take the obsession. They were going to anyway. Nice. Never didn't have it. They'll never know. Sorry, opponent. I believe this will kill that. Let's find out. Yep. Loses its toughness gaining ability. It wasn't a 7. That is the wrong creature to kill. Dispute open for their life under. Don't need our opponent gaining life. And they can seed a little prematurely there. Um, they have a chance to claw back into that with their uh, second murderous rider. I wouldn't have uh, given up quite that quick if I were them, but teach their own. And let's see what this is Spitfire. Mostly known from the old school cavalcade decks where you attack and uh, suddenly it's got like 10 plus power and oof. Turned out it wasn't necessary in the end, but you know, it was a cool deck. On the. Oh, I love this hand. This hand speaks to me. I really hope I'm playing against a blue deck. Oh, for shame. This hand speaks to me a lot less now. I'm gonna get greedy though. Against these green decks, I feel that you just kinda need to get in there and get in there fast. So, not holding up a counter spell for a possible Domri's ambush can be bad. Sailor will hit you for the same amount. 
No blocks. Hope we draw land here. Hurrah. And end turn. Hold up dispute and syncopate. We'll dispute that. We've got the lead. Oof. And now we don't. Spectral Sailor. I suppose we're gonna try and keep up the race and deploy a good blocker for their uh, robber. Excellent. That's actually really good there. Um, if they attack and. Okay, that one's just straight up in the I was gonna say if they attack and deploy our. Uh, Spectral Sailor, then we'll just Grazen Bar or bounce it and play it ourselves. No blocks. Not bad. No reach. That has reached. Alright. Tap down the robber. The random reach there could be uh, pretty bad. Could hit them for five, but I think I like uh, stone roll, stone walling their offense a little bit more here. We will indeed take that action and end the turn. Robber is fine. Do not mind. Robber is fine. We do not mind. I think we're going to Brazen Bounce. No, there's nothing they can hit that we care about. Alright, so. Let's go to Blocks. And then we take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, we hit back for one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, let's see. Oh, they've had enough. I was just trying to decide if we were going to block both. Um, if we we're going to block there and then bounce and still be alive. I think we were. We definitely had game just not blocking like that. I was lining up to see the damage first, and. Well. <laughs> opponent had just seen enough. Alright. And we're gonna keep jumping on in. Uh, no reason not to. And uh, please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It will really help the channel grow, and I really do enjoy seeing that. Um, especially the comments. I mostly get bot comments, so it's been a little unfortunate recently. Uh, but I really do enjoy responding to all of you and seeing what you have to say. Really uh, gives me something to do besides scroll through social media and be... Kinda of sad about the world these days. So opponent goes first, it's a Lurus deck. Hmm. I feel we want some card advantage in this hand, so I'm gonna give it one molt and probably regret it instantly. Well, regret it I do, but Unsummon not really great in this matchup. They play a lot of little things and no real big things. I think this is a pretty bad matchup for us. Here comes the cat swing. Shock. And the priest, oh boy. That's a card we want to see. I think we might trickster tap the priest here. Yeah. Trickster. Tap priest. Walk cat. Supplier is fine. 
five ram just probably came with full armor folk. And I'm fine with that honestly. Going down on cards to uh keep us off of our game. That means that the trickster traded for two. Probably gonna end up in step bouncing the priest. Um and hoping to draw something like a syncopate or a mystical dispute for it. If they play a Luris, that'll obviously change. We'll need to bounce the Luris instead. Yeah, what about that? Oh, excellent. Okay. I'm gonna sack both of those with the trigger on the stack. Mill some stuff. Hopefully they don't deploy anything with their mana. At least nothing too scary. What is the play opponent? They probably have something. We just don't know what it is. Ugh, the last thing we wanted to see. A second priest. Oh. And something else to play? Uh, that one gets negated. And we'll just thank our lucky stars that we got to interact with that at all. It's, uh, still gonna be really close because of that. Um, Luris being able to bring it back and we didn't draw a way to interact right now. Hmm. Serrated Scorpion. Yeah, that resolves. We'll just try and catch it after they activate, which they might even do this turn. Yep. Okay, so we know what they're about to do. They're going to get this, they're going to play the Luris, they're going to uh, deploy... What do you call it? <laughs> deploy the oven. And because we can't fight on that axis, we're instead going to bounce their priest, deploy our Spectral Sailor, untap Curious Obsession onto our Spectral Sailor, and really hope to get anywhere. Um, so... Saving ourselves some time here. Hopefully they uh, don't really. I'm well, saving ourselves time and pain from them sacking it. You know. Well, let's see. Sailor. Got to draw something. If we don't, we're uh, kind of dead. Definitely draw a card. Alright, um, I like that. Means we're gonna be shields down, but it also means they won't get to Luris. So here. Resolve, tap down Luris, loses its ability. We're just uh, noting here, incredibly vulnerable. We're not very far ahead, we're in fact quite far behind, and that's enough to end it. They've stolen it, they've killed it, they've gotten back their cat, and they've turned off our card advantage engine all at once. I suppose stealing it and killing it. You know. Their removal spell cantripped, dealt two damage to us, and brought a different creature of theirs back. Uh, if there was a one red, um, deal damage, destroy target creature, its controller takes damage equal to its power, you draw a card, um, <laughs> and, I mean, we'll keep it, but this is greedy, um, by which I mean, we're gonna be playing greedy, <laughs> um, and you return a creature 
from your graveyard to the battlefield. You or you return your cauldron familiar from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, that's kind of absurd. And that's basically what just happened to us there. We weren't winning that. So I still think blue-black is better, but this is a really good entry point to the deck, and it is ridiculously fun. So, alright, that's better. I was gonna say, it would be pretty bad for us here if we just, uh, tried to see Dasher on and get drawing. Because they'd just be able to, uh, get rid of our card advantage engine pretty easily if we did that. So instead, we'll deploy Borrower. See Dash on it. Oof. Oh, nothing we can do. We're just gonna deploy Borrower. Hope for the best. I think our opponent's just getting the most out of their Luris deck while they still can. Really? You're sacrificing the Fiend Artist? Okay. And not the... Huh. That is weird. I figured they'd sack the cat and the croak, so I think our opponent misplayed there. Now we're we're keeping these sea dashers. We'll take the three. Oof. I do not understand that play from our opponent. If anything happens, we'll deploy the Trickster. If not, uh, we'll just graze and borrow bounce and accept that we're going to lose our base. Hmm. That's fun. Let's see if they try and do anything before they lure us. I doubt it, though. So here we're going to Trickster, tap down the Priest, in case they're getting any ideas. So now they'll likely sack to the Crooks, or the Crooks into the Oven, allowing us to Brazen Borrow or something. And by something, I mean, uh, probably that there, Luris so we can start getting in. Maybe it's better to hit the priest though. Stop their uh, mana card draw sacrifice engine. At least for a turn. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. Yep, discard another sea dasher. I don't think we're going to need more than two on a creature. Keep another. Draw two cards. See if that helps at all. Not really. Meaning we have to do this now before their oven untaps. So we don't just lose the borrower. Not in the worst spot. I think we're gonna go double fairy vandal if we don't draw some counter magic. Specifically syncopate. 
We'll discard the uh, burn one. It'll be the slowest growing. It's also ground bound. And that's uh, not the best way to deal with a Lurus deck. Priest. Unsummon isn't bad. I think I'm gonna edge on trying to get a um, another land drop here, though. I mean, I'm drawing two more cards, so it's not the least likely thing in the world. And if it doesn't happen, we're not in the worst spot. Yes, come on, land, please. See what they do to us. Croxa. We discard one of our syncopates. They sack sack. We'll sacrifice our Merfolk trickster. But that's uncommon on uh, both of these. I couldn't imagine that in draft otherwise. <laughs> Alright. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I disabled the uh, emotes. I was going to say good game because... Um, yeah, I think a double block Texas here, so. Or at least gets the Fiend Artisan off the board and they can't uh, save it, at least. We are losing a Vandal, but I think we are well past the point of that being a problem. And well into the point of, holy cow, that Cauldron Familiar. All four Witches Ovens. <laughs> it's not a draw you beat. Our opponent just had better things to do before this point, note you. Because uh, they didn't draw three of those this turn. Our opponent's hand was so good that they could just not deploy three copies of Witches Oven with the cat. I'm not... I'm, it's not that I'm not sure, it's that I'm almost 100% positive we have no outs. I'm just uh, going to play it out. see exactly where we are here. And what's with all these syncopates? Well, we're not winning by not having damage go through, but I just think the, uh, I think we're just actually not winning, though, is the truth behind this draw all the cards we want at this point. If none of them do anything, it doesn't much matter. So, we'll end the turn. If they bring the cat back, 
this turn, I think we might almost have a shot. Nope. Alright, wish I'd put a stop in their upkeep before they could croak us from the bin. Alas, that is not the case. Summon the priest. <laughs> Man, this is this is crazy. Yeah, we can't actually interact with that either. Dread Horde Butcher, I believe, would just kill us this turn, so we're gonna count that. We're gonna fight this out. Um, just kind of a losing battle. Yeah, our only real hope there was that we, uh, our opponent would bring back the cat, we'd unsummon it, they'd tap for something, and then we would get the, uh, syncopate on the cat. Technically, still possible. Not happening, though, so. Next turn. Wait for whatever our opponent's doing here. Give them one more opportunity to misplay. for us to get exceptionally lucky. No, there is absolutely no way out of this now. Alright. Not bad. That was a fun game still. And we are still climbing. So we'll get in one more game with Mono Blue Flash and uh, call it a day from there. So here we are. Entering our last game with Mono Blue Flash. After this, I'll probably try and play a different archetype, although, if I'm being completely honest. I'm just enjoying Flash so much that I really don't want to. Um, and unless I can find something that I think is about as good, I probably will be right back to it. So, let's see. Against the Yorian deck, the Dispute will be good, the Vandal, the Borrowers, the Unsummons, not so much. Especially, I think it's, the Dispute is just too important. And unsummon still has versatility. Those borrowers are going to be the be, be the death of me. At least we got Sea Dasher. All right. Opponent is on the nightmare. The yeah. um. Right, we are going to dis. No, we're not. We're going to fairy vandal. We can unsummon that. In fact, we will. We still still hold up dispute. Um, we'll probably just unsummon again if I'm being completely honest, though. Get as much use out of them as possible. Here, we're going to really hope to get lucky, and by lucky I mean just draw. Any land. Draw a card that's a third of our deck. Woohoo. And now we have Teferi Answer.
And I think this time we dispute. It's not fairy, but it's still annoying. And we got to eat up a few of their turns there. There's the field of the dead. And another one. Counter spell, please. And works ish. Got a big threat. We're gonna deploy another reasonably sized threat. Rejuvenator, it's fine. And so it begins. Deploy as a threat. And goodbye, some of your attack force. Slow them down as much as physically possible here. Hit them for seven damage. Draw an extra card. Hope it's in the gate. So we're very vulnerable. Uh, yeah, we can bounce that and deploy a threat. So barring mystical dispute, I believe we have lethal. Alright, so we don't have lethal. But barring mystical dispute. Oh wait, no. Mystical dispute can't even be deployed now. I don't like bouncing it, actually. Yeah, bouncing Yorian makes me feel pretty bad about this, so let's see. If I just... I'm gonna wait. Because I'll be able to bounce on their turn. So I tap this down. Yeah, that doesn't matter. I really don't like bouncing Yorian, though. Maybe I don't even bounce. I trickster tap deploy. No, I think I do bounce. And I just have to accept that I'm going to give them more value. Five, six, seven, eight. One point off if I deploy Spectral Sailor and draw a card. Poor shame. Deploy land. End turn? Yeah. So they have to find a way to deal with both of my flyers. Oof. That deals with both of them. Yorian's fine. And we have game. Just saving the time there. The opponent now, your creature is gone, we have three power. Alright. And that is it for today's uh, video with Budget Mono Blue Flash. Um, if you liked the deck, uh, feel free to stick around. I'm going to brainstorm up some things we might want in the sideboard. So, from what we've seen so far, I think one of our problems is going to be um, just wanting more counters first. So, let me switch this over. I don't think there's any way to not syncopate, but add mystical disputes to the board straight from the main. Just make this easy on myself. Include not collected cards, okay. Include colorless good. Alright. So let's see. Until end of turn, non-token creature enter. That field wasn't cast. Um, I guess that turns off cat, but there are better ways to do that. Um, once you hit sideboard cards. Wouldn't be bad mainboard if it had, like, one more ability for, uh, the mono. 
blue deck or the merfolk deck, um, the kind of unblockable dudes deck uh, that you don't really see anymore. Hmm. I could almost see Siren Storm Tamer, but it's not really where we want to be. I think we'll play Spell Pierce. Definitely play, I think, a play set of Aethergast. Because we have no other, like, actual doesn't just uh, lose us card advantage removal. So against red-green decks, that's just, like, so much better than anything we could have in our main. Hmm. Essence Capture is honestly a really good card. Um, so two Essence Capture. This is, none of this is final, obviously. This is just first passes. Hmm. I like this card, but not here. I don't think this is the kind of deck where we want the fourth negate. We're much more uh, focused on trying to, how do you put it, trying to uh, get our card advantage and stop the creatures more importantly. Um, if we lose one or two creatures, it's fine, whereas in the blue-black deck, just defending one threat is, you know, kind of key because we have some threats that are so much better than others. Tempting, but I don't think that's good enough. Used to be, but that was uh, that was a different format. Let's see, looking for mystical dispute. Hmm. Watch, I've uh, already passed it, and you're all yelling at me in the comments. And I'll just be happy that I have comments. Hmm. I could... There we go. I was going to say, I could see playing the Narsets. Um, but I just don't think that it's a very good uh, card in this deck. If it were a better hate card in the meta, I'd play it. But as it stands. Uh, maybe we want some bigger threats in the board. Like standalone threats, so I could see Tempest in. Like, uh, if we're playing a grindy matchup, we might just want something that's kind of absolutely massive and can win the game on its own. Hmm. Tempting, tempting. Yeah, I could see it. Also, against Gruul being able to just go. Alright, so my small threats aren't working, but here's something that's just huge. Um. I'm going to trim down on those later, I believe. But as of now, no reason not to put the full four there. If I had more pirates, this card is really good. Just if it can uh, use its tap ability. Being able to go, and your team is tapped and I have a tempo advantage. Can I really swing races? Hmm. Kazmina's good, but I don't want to tap out for Kazmina in a deck full of low impact threats. I don't think card advantage is our problem, so we're going to pass on Reconnaissance Mission. Although, ooh, that gives me an idea. Maybe I'll play the uh, Thousand Year Storm deck again. That was always fun. Yeah, I think I'll rebuild Thousand Year Storm for the next deck. In Historic, of course. Hmm. Sleep buying us a turn. Let's us get in. Keeps their creatures tab. Let's us get in. Uh, I don't think so. It's close though. Just not quite there. Four mana is a lot to ask in this deck. And I think that's more of a main board card anyway. 
I'm not, I'm really not expecting to see absolutely anything here. I'm just waiting till we hit the X spells. And seeing if maybe. Actually. Yep. Shark Typhoons. I'm not actually going to play four. As you can see, I'm already over. Just don't want to have to come back for them. I suppose I wouldn't have to anyway. Well, whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. Alright. Stolen by the Fae. Could be a really nice tempo blowout. I think I'd even only just want one. Hmm. What would I want? An army? Or whatever their thing was. In this deck, I think I'd be happier with the army of one ones. Who knows though? Yep. Alright, moving along. Cards that I cannot cast. Don't want anything gold. Hmm. Sorry, Cunning Knight Bonder. I don't think you're good enough in Historic. There are just better options. Ashiok was something I thought of for a second there, but ultimately I don't like. I think this card is really, really close. Um, the Surveil is pretty good. A 3-2 for 3 isn't a bad body. But I think uh, ultimately it's just one too little point of toughness and no uh, evasion and just not quite enough uh, surveil to make it worth it. If it surveilled two, I think I'd be playing four of them, though. Um, actually, I think I'd be playing two of them. Just being able to, you know, get that uh, bit of value in and always hold up a threat, especially a reasonable threat. Now, this is the reason I want to play blue-green flash. I think this card is absolutely absurd if you uh, are also playing growth spiral. Alas, as we are not, and, uh, also, I think you have to play the Bonder, um, or sorry, not the Bonder, the Wolf thing, that uh, makes more wolves. And I, for now, only have one of them. That could change in the future. This card I want a deck built around, um, just being able to play a few copies of those in your mana base, if your mana base can handle it, would be so absurd. Uh, just lands that draw you cards at some point are always good. I mean, come on. Look at Arc Chivarazka. That's uh, that's five mana plus itself, so six mana, and you have to have ten permanents in play to do it. Still saw play. It was still really good. Because once you start drawing cards off your mana base, whew, all bets are off. All right, let's see. Against mono red? No, no. We've got to have something better than that, right? Like Shadow Spear. Maybe. Hmm. Alright, let's see. Start with Scrabbling Claws. We definitely need that for Cat Oven. Hmm. Shadow Spear. Only cost one. Only cost two to equip. Can help us swing a race. It also makes our threats better. Eh. I don't think I'm gonna want it. I think it's better than uh, the alternative that I thought of, though. Let's see. Sorcerer's Spyglass is something I'm thinking of. Um, just Spyglass being able to uh, shut off a walker can be pretty big. Heraldic Banner, in case we need to grow our dorks, but we're not really a one-drop deck. Or one-drop-centric. Maybe I'll build, like, a really budget mono-blue deck, um, with this and favorable wins. I don't know. I'll think about it. Play just four Tempest Shin. And I think the Shark Typhoon's gonna take the place of the Tempest Shin, mostly. I also don't think I'm gonna want to board in more than three Shark Typhoon ever. I've basically gotten to the end of uh, where any colorless card would still be remotely playable. Yep. Also, Spyglass can help shut off uh, Witch's Oven. 
another thing. Makes it somewhat worth it. Don't want to play the serpent. Okay. So, was there anything I passed that I think I might actually want now? Something for mono red that could uh, gain us a bit of life to get us back into it? Yeah, just one though? Yeah, I think just one. Um, I don't think we're going to... Yeah, because this will give us more threats, um, more bodies they have to deal with, and hopefully we'll be able to use that uh, to our advantage, as opposed to just taking their best creature, having one big creature they need one removal spell for. We can bounce a, you know, reasonable creature, and now have, like, a fairly large amount of creatures they need to have answers for. Uh, none of them being threatening individually, but the threat coming from the numbers. Alright, um... I don't think we're actually going to want the spell pierce. Um, yeah, we want those. I think we want this. I'm not 100% though. Essence capture is kind of greedy. As much as I like it. And I think we go down to one Tempestion. Just to kind of have uh, one pretty big threat we can bring in. Craft all. And that is now our sideboard. Um, this is a temporary board. We're going to try and modify it a little more as time goes on. Uh, Shark Typhoon just being pretty good against a fairy, and we want to be good against a fairy. Um, we have a decent amount of answers for him, but mystical disputes in the gates can only get you so far. Alright, so that is... Because, er, you know, if he gets onto the board. That's uh, actually the end of it. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you again next time. So, till then, have a nice day.